David, you're graduating soon. You worked so hard from high school to college. I was so impressed as I watched you. Yeah, I went through a lot of hard times, but I'm glad that I did the best I could. But I still need to work harder after I'm in the workforce. But I think it's thanks to you that I was able to hang in there. My pleasure. It was undeniably you who worked hard after that without slacking in your efforts. You made it into college with your incredible scores. I'm proud to have someone like that as my boyfriend. I'm glad to hear you say so, Violet. I'm glad I've started working at a famous company. I'm happy for you. Also, I'm pretty excited about your future endeavors too. Please continue to take good care of me from now on. Leave it to me. You can count on me for that. I think somehow you have some sort of a magical power that motivates me. Are you trying to tell me that I'm a witch? That's funny. I didn't mean it that way, but I just want you to know that I love you with all my heart. I'm going to ask for your hand in marriage, so just wait and see. Really? I'm so happy to hear you say that. I'll be with you no matter what. Promise me that you won't leave me. You have my word. I just finished work. I'm leaving the office now and heading home. Are you home already? I'm on my way home now, too. Huh? I thought you were off work today. Were you out? Yeah, I had to run some errands. Anyway, I need to ask you something. What is it? Um... What's wrong? Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? Don't be so naive. Wait a minute. Why are you so upset? I heard a rumor that your company is going bankrupt. Oh, that rumor. That's a serious thing for both of us. Why do you think so? Why? It's about our future, isn't it? Where did you hear that rumor? It doesn't matter. It won't make any difference anyway. So, what are we supposed to do? Well, it's not like we're going bankrupt or anything. But it's not a problem. I love you and you love me. At least we have each other. What are you talking about? What? Why is it not a problem? We promised to get married, didn't we? Yeah, and I haven't changed my mind. I've got the proposal date all planned out too. I'll marry you no matter what. Huh? How can I get married to you when your company's going to be bankrupt and you have no income? We can't make a living just by loving each other. I know, but... It's not like I won't be able to work forever if my current company goes bankrupt. It has nothing to do with our marriage. I've worked so hard to prepare myself to marry you. What have you been working so hard for? I don't get it. What do you mean? I don't understand what you're trying to say. Are you asking me to marry a man with no income? I was so relieved when I heard that you got a job at the well-known company. This isn't what you're talking about. Please, listen to me, Violet. You want to marry me, right? Then it doesn't matter where I work, does it? And it's not like I'm going to lose my income forever, because I can find another job right away. Don't be silly. Do you want us to live in poverty for the rest of our life? You've got to be kidding me. What? I'm going to marry you because you work for a well-known company. I dreamed of marrying you and living in a luxurious apartment. I dreamed of having everything I wanted. But you're going to lose your job, so my dream will never come true. No one said anything about losing my job. I'm willing to do any job for you. I'm not lying. Stop kidding me. I don't need your encouragement. If you're going to lose your income, then what's the point of us getting married? Violet, please don't say that. 
I was attracted to you because you work for a well-known company and you have a high income. I can't believe your company is going bankrupt. Don't make me laugh. What are you talking about? We've been dating since high school. Are you saying you'd break up with me just because my company went bankrupt? Was our relationship really that fragile? Bankruptcy is a serious problem. Having a good income is the most important thing in life. Huh? Where the husband works and how much he earns are the most important factors to be considered when a woman is thinking about marriage. Since the company you work for is going bankrupt, I'm not attracted to you anymore. Are you serious about that? You were so supportive back then, weren't you? Yes, I supported you so that you could get a job at a well-known company. But it doesn't seem worth it anymore. Violet, please don't do this to me. I know you're not that kind of woman. Unfortunately, I'm that kind of woman. I was and I'm still the same old me. Maybe you just didn't notice. I can't believe this is really happening. I'm leaving this apartment. Wait, Violet. Let's talk about it properly. There's nothing to discuss about. Goodbye. Long time no see. It's me, Violet. Are you David? You haven't changed your account, have you? How have you been? I'm looking forward to your reply. David, you read my message, right? Reply to me, or you can call me. I have so many things I want to talk to you about. Why are you ignoring me? Earth calling David. Are you there? Will you reply soon? Please stop ignoring me. You're so persistent. What do you want? I'm at work now. Oh, thank goodness. I knew you read my message. You shouldn't be shy. Let's just get to the point, okay? Please don't be so cold. Looks like you have changed. You're not like that before. Well, I guess things change after 10 years. I'm busy with work, so if you have nothing to tell me, let's end our conversation here. I'm not going to waste my time. Oh, wait a minute. I ran into one of my classmates from college the other day. Seems that you're a famous guy now. What are you talking about? I saw you on TV, and I know you make 50 billion a year. I understand that you've worked hard since we broke up. Well, you've been a hard worker since high school. I really admire you. It's amazing that your company isn't just a famous company, but an independent company with annual sales of $50 billion. You established your own company, didn't you? I'm surprised. So what? Was that the only thing you want to talk about with me? Let's hang up then. Hold on a sec. You're being rude to me. Let me ask you straight. How did you make it this far? That's none of your business. I'm not going to talk about it, so leave me alone. I need to know. Why? Because you and I have known each other for such a long time. How can you say that? You left me and moved out of our apartment. I don't think I have anything to do with you anymore. Think about what you've done to me. Don't say that. It was ten years ago. I'd rather hear about how you became such a successful man. I couldn't tell you because things were going on behind the scenes at the time. Instead of letting the company at the time go bankrupt, I was planning to set up a new company. Even though I was going independent, the same parent company remained the same. I remember how happy I was at that time until you dumped me. Wow, that's great. Why didn't you tell me when we were together? 
I was thinking to tell you at some point, but you left our apartment right away. I see, but it can't be helped. No one can change the past, so it's time to move on. I was sorry to see the company go bankrupt, but the board members at the parent company recognized my hard work. That's why they approached me secretly for another opportunity. I understand. Glad to hear that. I'm so proud of you. What are you talking about? You said you couldn't marry me because I was poor. Then you left me just like that. I was dumped by you. Stop blabbering nonsense. I was so young back then. The word bankruptcy just made me so mad. I was being very childish. I'm so ashamed of myself. Really? But now I understand. I know how hard you work and how talented you are. Not everyone can do that. That's why I respect you from the bottom of my heart. Well, thanks for your compliment. Anyway, can we end our conversation here? And please stop texting me. Wait a minute. Would you like to meet me sometime? How about having dinner together to celebrate your success? No thanks. I don't need you to congratulate me. More importantly, I'm busy, so don't disturb me anymore. David, do you have a minute? No, I don't. Oh, don't be so cold. Come hang out with me for a while. I'm checking materials for the meeting this afternoon, so I don't have time for that. Bye. Wait! I really wanted to say something to you. What is it? Let's start over and get married. Huh? Because you told me that I have the magical power to motivate you, right? I think if you marry me, you can rise higher from your current position. I promise that I'll be your best partner. Are you an idiot? That was a long time ago. You gotta be kidding me. I'm serious. Don't be silly. You left me. That's the reality. There's no way we can be partners anymore. No, I'm confident I can still work my magic on you. Let's spend our days together in good times and bad. Good times and bad? Don't be silly. When I was having a hard time, you ran away so easily, didn't you? I'm sorry. I was too young to think clearly. But now I finally understand. You are all I have left. Are you sure? Does that mean financially? Huh? When I got a message from you the other day, I was at work. And our message exchange was on the big screen in the CEO's office. What does that have to do with anything? My secretary was watching the screen. What? Isn't that an invasion of privacy? Since my secretary told me that she smells something fishy about you, so I thought maybe there was something going on. I don't think your secretary is right. That's very rude of her. You are a good man, David. I think you should fire that silly secretary. She's trying to deceive you. If you want, I can be your secretary. Well, listen... I trust my secretary so much that I asked her to do some research on you. Research? What was the result then? I heard you're struggling with debt. Um, there must be some kind of mistake. I used to have debts, but I'm working to pay them off. For your information, I'm not jobless. Really? But according to the research, you're addicted to gambling. You're running around betting on slot machines, horse race, and boat race, aren't you? I don't think you have time to work when you're doing those. That's a lie. I don't gamble. Where did you get that information? I'm sure your secretary made up that story. I don't think so. I ordered my secretary to use the investigation agency. Investigation agency? I can't believe you did that. I have the right to do that. You are drowning in your own debt. 
Then, you just happened to hear about me and you contacted me out of the blue. You were going to ask me to pay off your debt, weren't you? That's not true. Please don't say such a terrible thing. It sounds like something you'd think about. I told you earlier, didn't I? It took me ten years to realize that you're the only one for me after all. I'm sick of hearing your crap talking. You were always saying that love is blind and so on. What are you talking about? You've been gambling since we were together, right? Why are you asking me that question? When I lived with you, I left my bank book with you. After you moved out of the apartment, I was surprised to see the balance in the bank book. I didn't know what you spent it on at the time, but now I finally solved the mystery. Looks like I wasn't thinking clearly too at that time. You deceived me. That's a terrible thing to say. You're the one who's terrible. You used that money to pay off your debt, didn't you? You're right. I'm sorry I used your savings to pay off my debt. I'm really sorry, but I still love you. I love you so much that I couldn't help myself. This is my true feeling. So why don't we start over and get married? Don't lie to me. I won't be fooled anymore. I don't want to work for your debt ever again. Don't say that. Trust me. Let's get married this time and spend a happy life together. For your information, I'm a married man. What? You didn't tell me anything about that. I've been struggling to get my own company off the ground ever since. It was a new company with only a few employees. My wife was there for me every step of the way. You're kidding me, right? At the time, I had no savings and no fixed income, but she was there for me to support me, not only at work, but also at home. What? She cooked meals and brought them to me. She took my laundry to the self-service laundry machine and washed them all. She even took care of me. That's just a trick. She wanted to get more money for herself. It's so obvious. I couldn't pay her for what she did to me back then. My wife did everything without asking for any payment. Well... A few months later, when sales started to pick up, I was finally able to pay her a decent salary. She never said a word. She just kept quiet and worked for me. I know that she loves me from the bottom of her heart. I don't think you understand that, since all you think about is money. I don't understand. I'm sure she was looking ahead to the future. Your wife must be very happy now. My wife is still a modest woman, unlike you. Don't be rude to me. She said that if she stayed in the company, the other employees would be concerned about her. So she decided to leave the company right after we got married. Now, she's a housewife and she's taking care of the house perfectly. I think she's too good for me. She's living a good life, so I think it's her responsibility to take care of the housework. Well, let me ask you then. Can you do that? You dressed up in luxurious brand clothes every day. You also eat out for lunch and dinner at fancy restaurants. So I don't think you're capable of living a modest life. I don't think so. I could do that if I wanted to. We started out living in a shabby apartment. Shabby apartment? That's right. It's my wife's idea. That's ridiculous. You can't let the CEO of a company live in an apartment like that. That's just your shallow thinking. My wife said that since I'm the CEO, I'm responsible for the families of all the employees. She wants to build up some reserves in case things go wrong. So she put up with everything herself and led a frugal life. What an old-fashioned way of thinking. That kind of thinking is what made the company grow. So I'm grateful to my wife. 
I was a bit arrogant at the time, so I kept in mind what my wife said to me. I've been working hard every day to make it what it is today. I don't want to destroy our efforts of the past 10 years. That's a terrible thing to say. Just shut up and get out of my face. Don't ever drop me any message again. I don't care what you say, but I'm in financial trouble too. So instead of disappearing, can you help me out with some money? Then I'll disappear from your life. You really are a scumbag. I don't care what you say, but I need you to help me. Twenty million is a small amount of money for you. A man who makes fifty billion a year. Can't you do something about it? I can't. Why not? What a stingy man. You've already spent all the money in our joint savings account. I don't have any more money to give you. Then I can't just disappear. Fair enough. Then I'm turning you in to the police. Huh? Why the police? Stop joking. I'm not joking. Ten years ago for embezzlement, this time for blackmail. The evidence is all here. You're a nasty guy. I can't believe you would do such a thing. Of course. I can't let you ruin my happiness. I have no one to turn to anymore. You have to help me. You are all I have. I refuse. If you need money, get a decent job. If you put the time you spend gambling madly into your work, you can pay off your debt gradually. The amount of debt I have is driving me crazy. I can't do it. David, help me, please. I can't. It's your own fault. Reflect on yourself and start over from scratch. Oh, no. There's nothing I can do. I'm going to block your number. Please don't. Can't you see that I'm begging you? If you have anything to do with me in the future, I'll report you to the police. Did I make myself clear to you? Wait, David! After that, Violet visited my company several times. But in each case, the guard kicked her out. The third time, when she came in, I turned her to the police as promised. She has received a severe warning, and I am sure she will be punished if this ever happened again in the future. I finally stopped seeing her after that day. I don't know where she is now. Every day, I feel very sorry for myself for not having a good eye for women, even if it was due to how young I was. Thanks to the bad experience in my love life that I feel even more in love with my wife, who simply trusts me without saying a word. I hope that this happiness will never run away from me. I will continue to push forward with my utmost efforts to ensure that this happiness never escapes. Olivia, you're staying home and being lazy, aren't you? I know you're pretending to be busy. I know you're not busy, so reply to me now. Don't assume that, Linda. How many times have I told you? I'm not being lazy. I work from home every day. There you go, just making excuses. I told you I'm tired of hearing that lie. I'm watching you. Whenever I go to your house, you're always relaxing on the couch, drinking tea and not working. I wonder if you can call that work. No, not like that. You just come over here at the same hour every time. I have the same routine every day. I'm taking a short break when you come. You just come during my break, so why don't you come at a different hour? How dare you talk to me like that? It's so rude of you. I'm busy, but I'm visiting you. Normally, you, the wife, should come to my house every day. Oh, I see. Every day? Do we have something to talk about every day? I'm busy too. Wow, is that how you speak to your mother-in-law? Don't tell me like you don't care. You are not a good wife. That's why you got divorced. What? Divorce? What are you talking about? Are you talking about us? Haha, -ha, don't ask stupid questions. Who else is there? He said it was terrible to have a wife who can't support him. 
I really feel sorry for my son. Ed calls me every day to complain about you. You didn't know that? I can't believe you're stressing out your husband. What do you do every day? You're such a bad wife that you can't even keep track of what your husband is doing. I don't need you to tell me what to do. I mean, I'm asking you what you mean by divorce. I haven't heard anything from him. Oh, really? Is that so? Well, maybe he doesn't want to hear your complaints, so he can't tell you anything. You're divorced. You guys are divorced. Are you surprised? Huh? What? What do you mean, are you surprised? You're kidding, right? You can't do that on your own, can you? You got divorced. It's like a stain in your life. Do you think I'm joking? I thought you must be panicked by getting divorced. So I was going to go see your face, but I'm worried that you might get desperate and hurt me, lol. I thought I'd just check on you through text. You know, I'd love to hear what you think. I know I'm a stranger now, but well, I'd love to see where the no good wife is down and out. Send me a picture. Huh? What are you saying? I'm not down and out. I mean, I don't understand this situation at all. Ed's staying at my place for a few days from today. You shall pack your stuff and leave today, okay? I'm not packing my things. The one who should be packing is Ed. What are you talking about? You're so brazen. You're not going to leave? If Ed lives there, shouldn't you be the one to leave? It's no use resisting. Um, Linda, do you remember that this apartment is under my name since I bought it when I was single? Huh? Really? When you were single? Yes. So if it's true that we're divorced, then Ed is the one who's leaving now that he's a stranger. Huh? Are you kidding me? He lied? He said he bought the apartment with his own money. I heard that it was under his name. Ha <laughs> He wanted to show off. No, it's under my name. I mean, I don't understand why we are divorced. How do you know we are divorced? Hey, I mean, it's obvious because I did it. It's not like I knew or didn't know. I'm the one who made you guys divorced. What? For what? Why? That's not okay. So you wrote the divorce papers on your own? That's not acceptable. Hey, that would be a crime. Who do you think I am? I'm not that stupid. Then how could it be accepted? You guys wrote it right after you got married, right? Is it some kind of stupid promise that you wouldn't cheat on each other? You even signed your name so that if you cheated on each other, you could file for divorce right away. Ed gave your response to me. That's why it's your handwriting. Oh, you're right. I remember. So you're saying that you filed it? You know I didn't write that because I really wanted to divorce, right? I don't know anything about your feelings. It was your fault for signing the paper. I just filed it on your behalf. Ed's kind of wishy-washy, sensitive and kind. So he was probably too scared to tell you. I thought you guys had talked it over and decided, but you must have been a very scary wife. I thought you both asked me to file the papers. If you thought so, why didn't you check with me? Why would you do such an important thing so carelessly? Why would I? There's no need. Ed said it. Of course I believe him. Why would I doubt him? Doubt my own son and check it with his wife? No way. But getting divorced isn't that easy. And filing it without permission? That's too insane. Shut up! Why do I have to be blamed so much? Think about it. You should rather thank me. What would have happened if I hadn't told you about the divorce? You're all alone in your misunderstanding. You didn't even know that you were divorced. Would you have preferred that? That's true, but you still did it without my permission. Well, as a parent, I agreed to the divorce and I'm happy if Ed is happy. Listening to you, I felt sorry for him. Even if you stayed with him like this, you would still make him suffer, so let him go free. He would feel comfortable if you let him go. He doesn't want a wife like you. Why would I make him suffer? What do you mean by letting him go free? I'm not restraining him in any way. What is he saying about me? Was he really complaining about me? Until this morning, everything was the same. He was smiling and we didn't have a fight. I couldn't think of any cause or reason for wanting him to get divorced. It's a serious matter that you are not aware of it. 
First of all, he said he cannot accept you for using his money. You say you work, but in reality, he says you don't work at all and he supports you. You don't clean the house or do the laundry, right? You would only go shopping. I heard that you don't even cook a decent meal. All you do is get delivery. What? You don't work. You don't do housework. When I tried to warn you about your lazy lifestyle, you'd get upset. He said he was exhausted both mentally and physically, and he was in tears because he wanted to at least eat homemade food. He cannot stay with you any longer. Huh? I understand you would be speechless, but this is the truth. That's why Ed wanted to divorce you. He's really sweet. He says he won't even ask for property division because he knows it will be hard for you to make a living. Isn't this a good deal for you two? Be grateful. Um, what you just said? I have no idea. Did Ed really say all of that? What? Are you still lying? But at least it's true that you're unemployed, right? You're always at home, relaxing. I saw it with my own eyes too. Stop fooling around. How many times do I have to tell you that I was having a break? Well, I give up. Whatever. Whether it's a lie or the truth, as long as he says he wants to get divorced, we can't go back. Understood? Wouldn't it be better for you guys to get divorced and go separate ways? Either one of you has lost interest. It's over anyway. Stop holding on to him. I'm not holding on or whatever because this happened so suddenly. Very unrealistic. Oh, by the way, Ed said this too. He said he doesn't want a wife who can't respect her husband. I hear you're a lot aggressive than you look. You're not cute. I heard you were not only a toxic wife inside the house but also outside. You should understand his position. Huh? Did he really say that? Are you trying to say I'm lying? I don't have time to think about making up such details. I've been asking you for this kind of thing for a long time. Do you know how I felt? I was so worried about him. It was making my head hurt. As your mother-in-law, I have so many things I want to say to you too. I have been patient. None of your stories have ever been familiar to me. If you are not lying, then Ed... Shut up! It's not convenient for you, so you're blaming someone else? Are you trying to say that Ed is lying? Then let me ask you, why should he lie this much? If you guys love each other, there's no need to complain, right? I don't understand. And if I did, I wouldn't be struggling. Right? You lived selfishly as much as you wanted without realizing it. And you made him suffer. That's the fact. He doesn't have time for all these lies. So stop complaining and get your stuff together. Linda, don't forget this apartment is mine. So I'll send his stuff there for now. There's not much though. Wait! I'll check about it with him again. Don't touch any of his stuff. Even if you say everything is not true, there's a possibility that you're lying. I don't trust anything that a toxic wife says. Ugh, do what you want. I'm tired. I'm sure when you were single, you were working too. Did you really get paid enough to buy that apartment? That place can't be cheap. I can't even believe that. There's no way you could afford it. I guess you're the one who's lying, aren't you? Are you trying to take advantage of his kindness? That's enough. If you don't trust me, go to court or whatever. I have nothing to hide. I'll never leave this place, so I'll send this stuff over there because I don't want to wait for you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. Wait! Hey! Aren't you being too pushy? Finally, the true nature of the devil has come out. We should make it clear which is the truth. Don't send me his stuff without permission. Hey! Are you listening to me? Olivia? How are you? Are you busy? Do you remember me? I'm Ed's mother. I was worried about you. I wondered how you were doing. It's been a while. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. Can I help you? I'm sorry to rush in when you're busy. Listen, I wanted to ask you something. Yes? I heard about you. Is it true that you started running a business? Huh? You're asking me that now? Yes. So? What about it? You weren't interested in me, were you? I was just wondering how your business is going. What is it suddenly? You didn't believe me at all. Think about it. People don't ask about that to strangers so easily. What are you trying to do? 
Are you up to something again? Don't be that harsh. I'm not planning anything. I'm sorry for asking such a strange question. Actually, Ed came to live with me after the divorce, but he's been acting strange. He's more stingy with money than ever. You mean he doesn't pay much? Well, yes, in a bad way. He used to take me out to a fancy restaurant once a week or buy me expensive luxury brand gifts. Oh, that's what he has been doing. So? Yeah, he's surprisingly conscientious, isn't he? I thought he was a good son, but as soon as he moved in with me, he stopped giving me money to live on. And of course, no more dinner surprise. So I asked him about it, and he said he didn't have any money. But you guys didn't divide the property, right? How can he not have any money? Right. There's no child support either. All of his income belongs to Ed. So I thought it was strange, so I questioned him. And then he reluctantly said, I was able to spend freely because I was using Olivia's credit card. Oh, so that's what happened. He told you from his mouth. He spit it out sooner than I thought. Yes, that's the truth. He was spending a lot of money on my credit card. I warned him, but he wouldn't stop, so I almost gave up. What do you mean? I don't understand. You don't work. You were always at home, and you were living on Ed's earnings, right? You're persistent. I denied it over and over again. I told you before, I work from home. I also run a company, but I keep myself busy by doing other things too. Lies! Then how much is your annual income? Ed makes about $4,000, right? I make about 30 times that. What? Well, if his wife earns that much, he must want to spend a lot, but he can't do that anymore. I know it's hard to lower the standard of living, but it has nothing to do with me. Good luck. It's none of my business anymore. Wait a minute! Why didn't you tell me first? What are you talking about? Does it have anything to do with money? I don't like to show off. If you had explained in detail from the beginning, I would have understood. I misunderstood that you don't work. Oh, really? I've told you many times that I work in my own way, though, haven't I? I'm sorry about that, but it doesn't matter now, does it? That's all right. It's easy. Get back together. Get back together? Get back together with Ed. Just do it. I mean, you want it to happen, right? You've only been married for a year. You guys can get married again, and everything will be like it used to be. I can help you with that. What? Wow. Getting back together. That won't happen. I finally got my life back and enjoying it. And I don't want things to go back to the way they were. Why not? You guys loved each other once, right? It'll all be back to normal soon. I'm horrified just to hear you say that. It's a nightmare. I have no intention of getting back together with a liar like Ed. I'm even glad I divorced him. Don't say like that. It's possible, isn't it? Marriage is a constant effort, right? Don't give up. There's zero possibility, and we're already divorced. There's no need to even try. And let me tell you something. I refuse to marry back into a place where the mother-in-law is demanding money. I'm not talking about money. Oh, then, did I give you the wrong idea? Of course, I'll make Ed admit that what he's been saying is a lie. I just want to support him because he wants to get back with you too. This is true from the bottom of my heart. I can't. Please give up. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a business meeting now. Hey, wait! Hello? I just heard that Ed is in front of your office. Can you come out for a minute? He's so passionate. I thought so. Not passionate. He's pathologically persistent. I noticed I was getting a lot of calls from that liar. I just called the security, so please wait. What? The security? Yes. He's obviously suspicious. We don't want any trouble. Hey, hey! Don't do that. It will be a big problem. He's your husband. Take good care of him. You're always so opportunistic, aren't you? Don't make me laugh. In the first place, that idiot man standing in front of my company is a husband of another woman, right? Huh? After that, something didn't make sense, so I had my secretary look into it. He remarried right after we got divorced, in a hurry, spending all my money and having an affair. That's why you guys complained about me a lot. But he didn't ask me to divide the property. 
Of course, he didn't want me to know about it. No, no. They just happened to get married soon. But they're already planning to get divorced. He has realized you're the only one he loves. Huh? She's the worst wife of all, that lady. She doesn't work. She doesn't do housework. She just looks at her face in the mirror every day and smells like perfume. Of course, she doesn't work from home like you do. I'm sure this time because I live with her. She's the wife who doesn't do anything. I've been scolding her every day, trying to train her. Oh, I see. How long have you been living together? Since they got married. That means you made us divorce, allowed him to marry a woman he had just met, and then started living with her without a care in the world? Yes, that's right. I didn't do anything wrong. You wanted to know everything about me and was reluctant to let Ed marry me. But you allowed him to marry a woman you didn't know where she came from? People change, don't they? Oh, I wonder if you've become kind in your old age. You're so chatty, aren't you? Well, that's not the point. What about getting back together? Don't be cool and rely on the security guard. You two should talk it out. Getting remarried? I told you I have no intention of getting back together. Don't make me laugh. I don't want to get back with him. I don't even want to see his face. Do you understand? Please remember that. Don't ever come to my office or my house again. Don't you want to see his face again? Don't say that. I feel sorry for him. Feel sorry? It's none of my business anymore. Why don't you do something about it? I don't care what happens to him. I'm a stranger. Now, if you'll excuse me, please don't call me again to tell me this nonsense. Hey! Hey! Please call your parents. I think they've got it all wrong. And I don't understand why they have to act like that to me. Oh, right. They shut you out. My parents aren't so bad, huh? I'm sorry for you. I got a call from them, so you may leave. There's nothing to talk about. I want you to listen to me. It's very important. Today, I took Ed to your parents' house to tell them you're getting remarried and to apologize, of course. And then, they shut us out without saying a word. I was so surprised. I heard all about it. Well, it can't be helped. You deserve it. I mean, it's your fault for not discussing before you do anything. Besides, I got remarried in the first place. I wasn't going to tell you, but since you were so insistent, I have no choice. Huh? So please don't get all wrong and tell everyone that we're getting remarried without my permission, okay? It won't be accepted like the divorce. Oh, and don't come over to my house, okay? I'm not there. By the way, we're on our honeymoon right now. It's domestic, but we're enjoying ourselves at a very luxurious hotel. What? What do you mean? I got remarried two weeks ago. This is my destiny. I was enjoying myself with a lot of happiness, and suddenly I got a call from you. I'm letting all that stress go out here. How far are you really going to make me pissed off? That's not what I meant. Why did you remarry without asking me? I haven't heard about it. I told you. I wasn't going to tell you. Do I need someone else's permission? There's no need. And yet, you guys are liars and money mad. Liars? Money mad? I got a call from your husband. I really felt sorry for him from the bottom of my heart. He was on his business trip, so he could only hear this story from both of you too. He said he was sorry he couldn't be there for me. He also told me, that he would take you far away so that you would never see me again. He was really the only decent person. That's why I feel sorry for him even more. What? It sounds like you will be forced to move to your husband's parents' house. LOL. I hear it's full of nature, so I hope it will cleanse your heart. I wish you and your stupid son good luck. Huh? To his parents' house? I heard you're going to live together with them. Linda... Getting back to the position of a daughter-in-law? Hmm, good luck with that. According to him, it would be safer to have you watched by someone. Are you kidding me? I don't get along with his mother. No, absolutely not. With that personality of yours, I'm sure that's true. You can't get along with anyone, that's for sure. But that's none of my business. Well, good luck. I'm in trouble. Help! You're the only one who can help me. Hey! Can you get divorced right away? I'll do anything. So come over here and let's live together, please. It'll be fun. I have no intention of doing that. 
But let me ask you this. What kind of advantage do I have when I remarry him? You can be with Ed. With a liar? Money madman? No thanks, LOL. Isn't that a disadvantage? I'm not getting anything out of it. Plus, you have me. We know each other well. Ew, that's the worst thing. An old hag who loves to bully me and loves her son too much? Hmm, when I think about it, there's not even a single advantage. Oh, I'm so glad I got divorced. Are you kidding me? I can't let this happen. You're the only one having trouble. You're acting so funny. None of my business. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. I had the chance to talk to his new wife. She told me that he was cheating on me before we got divorced. She told me that she regrets marrying a scumbag and she was on my side. I heard the whole story. Huh? Instead of telling her to take the responsibility, I asked her for the proof of the liar having an affair. And you knew about it and hid it from me. Sound recordings, photos, message exchanges. I have all the evidence. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Since you guys are so persistent, the statute of limitations hasn't expired yet. So I'm going to file a claim for property division. Huh? I thought you can't do that. What are you saying? What are you talking about? Of course I can. I'm sure she's relieved that she provided me with the evidence. But I've got another piece of evidence, and I'm planning to file it to make her take the responsibility. Oh, what will happen when the lawyer contacts her? I can't wait to see her face get despaired. Oh no, you can't do that. Don't you feel guilty? There are things you are allowed to do and things you are not allowed to do as a human being, right? Huh? That's exactly what I'm going to tell you. That's the punishment for hurting people. You guys deserve it. Please don't contact me ever. Ed and his wife received a mail regarding the proof of affair, and the wife told me that I was a liar. I ignored her and won in a settlement. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I was able to get them to take full responsibility for the incident legally. I'm planning to go on a trip with my husband again by using that money. And now, the lying mother and son are working very hard every day at her husband's family home deep in the mountains in the countryside. They are working day and night to help their parents farm. It makes me laugh at the thought of Linda working on a farm. It seems that her husband has threatened to divorce her if she runs away, leaving her with no choice but to continue working. I guess she'll have to keep working for the rest of her life. Sis, can you talk to me right now? I got a call that you were seriously injured and hospitalized. Are you okay? Bethany, thanks for contacting me. I can't call you because I'm in the hospital room, but we can text each other. I was so surprised to hear about your accident. I was surprised too. Maybe I'm the most surprised here. So, how are you feeling? I'm fine, but I broke my leg. Or more precisely, the bone near my femur. I'm going to be in the hospital for a while. Even if I get out of the hospital, I'll have to move from one hospital to another for rehabilitation. It's going to be a long time. I see. How's the pain? It's just after the accident, so I'm still in a lot of pain. But I'm in the hospital, so I can tell the nurses to help me get rid of the pain. Just listening to what you told me? It sounds like it hurts so much. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Yeah, thanks. I'll let you know if I need your help. Judas, are you busy? I just entered my lunch break. I see. Anyway, could you bring me a change of clothes? I've been wearing the same clothes for so long, so I need to change. I'm going on a business trip tomorrow. Really? Seems that you're busy. Don't you have time tonight? You can just use the courier to deliver it to me. Don't be reckless. I need to wake up early in the morning tomorrow. I know, but I want to see you. You're not a child. Don't be selfish. I can't let myself spoil you all the time. I'm sorry for troubling you. The pain has subsided a bit, 
and I wanted to see you. Also, I really need a change of clothes. Why don't you just buy some? Don't just call me every time you want something. What? Are you mad at me? I'm sorry. I've been so busy that I just got irritated. Sorry for that. I'm also annoyed when you apologize in such a deliberate manner. Then what should I do? I'm still a wounded person, so please give me a little more help. Except for emergency call, I want you to stay quiet and recuperate. Isn't that too cold? I didn't get hurt because I wanted to. You should be a little more concerned about me. It's not that I'm not worried. Judas, you were so nice to me before. Lately, you've been kind of distant. Even before the accident, I was worried about you. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm just busy with work. I know that your work has gotten busier. You've been working more overtime hours than before. I always felt lonely whenever I cooked dinner and waited for you alone. Can you stop talking about that now? It has nothing to do with your injury or hospitalization, right? Yes, but you always contacted me before. Now you don't even bother to call me when you work overtime anymore. Now that we've been married for quite a while and I'm the breadwinner, we can't stay like newlyweds forever. You should understand that much. You never used to get mad at me for this. You're so persistent. Sorry. Oh, I forgot to tell you. What? I'm going on an overseas trip next week. What? At a time like this? What do you mean? I'm going to work and living my life as usual. Yes, but I've been in an accident and I'm in the hospital. Don't you have any concern for me? I do worry about you, but my co-workers invited me on a golf trip. I'm kind of living a single life now, so I said yes with a light heart. I can't believe you just did that. I'm about to go through a whole lot of rehab from now on. Then let me ask you, what do you want me to do? I can't help your injury. I also can't do the rehabilitation on your behalf. I know, but I'm mentally damaged too. I just want you to be close to me. You're being very childish, Rosie. I don't know how I can cope with you from now on. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm very busy at work, so you're on your own. We've got a great concession stand now. If you need something, you should buy it yourself. If you insist so much, I won't ask you anymore. It's so annoying when you twist things like that. Just forget it. Bethany, can I have a word? Sis, what's wrong? I was wondering if you could bring me a change of clothes. If I'm available, I'll do so. Really? Thanks. I'm going to run out of spare clothes today, so I need you to bring them by tomorrow. Tomorrow? Actually, I'm going on an overseas business trip tomorrow. What? You're going abroad on a business trip? Yes, I've been promoted. I see. I'll ask mom to do it for me then. I'm sorry. Never mind. It can't be helped since you're working too. I wish my husband could be a little more helpful. Are you talking about Judas? What happened? Yes, he's busy with work, so he wants me to buy everything I don't have enough of. But if I had to buy everything... It would be ridiculous financially, wouldn't it? I'll be in the hospital for a long time from now on. I know. But your husband is on a business trip too, right? It's no wonder he couldn't help, even if you told him the day before. What? How did you know about that? What's wrong? Nothing. I'm sorry, I don't seem very helpful either. No problem. By the way, how long are you planning to stay overseas? I'm going to be there for four nights and five days starting tomorrow. Even though it's for work, 
It's my first time overseas, so I'm looking forward to it. That's great. Well, good luck with your work. I'm sorry I couldn't bring a change of clothes for you. Don't worry about that. Sis? Please, it's urgent! Bethany? Is that you? What's wrong? I can't call you since I'm inside the hospital room, sorry. You can just text me. Your husband had an accident abroad. What? I just got a call from the police. It was a terrible accident and he's dying. They want one of his relatives to come. But you're in the hospital, so I'll go on your behalf. What do you mean he's dying? I don't know, so I'll go anyway to check on him. Bethany, wait a minute. Sis? I told you I can't answer your call, didn't I? Sis, you may find this hard to believe. Your husband took his last breath before I arrived. What? You mean he died? Believe it or not, yes, that's right. Is it true? It seems he slipped off a cliff while climbing the mountain. I have the backpack that belonged to him. Huh? How did you know about that before me? What do you mean? Could you please explain to me? I don't understand. I know it's hard to accept the fact that he died. It's so sudden. I haven't been able to think straight since yesterday. Anyway, I have a huge concern about that. What is it? I'm his wife, so I wonder why no one has contacted me to let me know about what happened to him. Don't you think that police usually call the spouse in this kind of circumstances? I don't know why that is. Isn't it because you're in the hospital? Besides, it's such a big case, and yet I haven't heard anything from his parents either. If their son died, they should have contacted me immediately, right? Something doesn't seem right. You're right. Anyway, sis, shouldn't you take care of his insurance and other formalities as soon as possible? Anyway, which police department contacted you? What was the name of the officer in charge? I can't remember. My mind is so blank. I was desperate too. I'm more concerned about the procedure. By the way, Judas said he was going on a golf trip with his colleagues. Why did he climb the mountain when he said that he was going on a golf trip? And it's funny that he even had a backpack. He doesn't bring a backpack to golf trips. Are you sure about that? And why are you here? I thought you told me that you went on a business trip overseas for four nights and five days. It was a mistake my company made. They didn't have everything ready for me, so the business trip was postponed. Anyway, that's not the point, sis. Your husband passed away. We have to do all the formalities as soon as possible. I can't believe it. Because no one in my family has been notified, and no one has seen his body. Sis, don't you believe me? I want to believe you, but there are too many inconsistencies to make what you told me believable. What are you talking about in an emergency like this? Recently, Judas's attitude toward me has been strangely cold. He suddenly announced that he was going on an overseas trip. The dates are exactly the same as your overseas business trip. Something doesn't add up. Isn't that just your imagination? I don't know. Then maybe I should ask someone at the company. About what? Judas said he was going on an overseas trip with his colleagues from work. I wonder if anyone else is taking a vacation on the same dates. We need to check with those people about Judas too, right? I'll look into that. You're in the hospital, so it's hard for you to call and find out, isn't it? Bethany, you're lying, aren't you? Why? You're jumping to conclusions. Besides, I didn't miss anything you told me. 
What are you talking about? When I told you that Judas wasn't being helpful, you knew that he went on a business trip, right? I don't remember anything about that. And you also knew that Judas and I had exchanged messages the day before. That's impossible, isn't it? Only Judas and I could have known about it. I wonder... I realized that something's wrong at that time. What? Bethany, you're having an affair with Judas, aren't you? That's not true. Sis, at a time like this, there's no way I'm having an affair with your husband. Really? Then can I report this to our parents and Judas's parents? I mean, I have to report it anyway. Well... Hey, Rosie. You're such a nasty woman. How dare you deceive Bethany? Bethany? How dare you have an affair with my own sister behind my back? I knew it right away. Why don't you come up with a better plan? It's none of your business. What do you mean? I'm hurt and I've been through a lot of difficulties. But you were going for an affair trip with my sister. You must be kidding me. That's because you're not attractive. I'd rather be with Bethany than watching you in the hospital. You need to consider my feelings. When did you become such a heartless person? It's crazy to think that you were trying to erase yourself from the world. I don't care about that. You shouldn't have done that. You faked it because you didn't want to pay alimony since you were having an affair. You thought that if you were gone before the affair was discovered, you wouldn't have to pay alimony. It's really childish of you to think that way. Shut up. This is what happened because you didn't take care of yourself, right? Huh? This happened because you tried to depend on someone else. I don't understand what you're saying. I told you to buy it yourself if you need something. And then you tried to get Bethany to bring your clothes for you. You got yourself into this mess. What a dumbfounded reason. You're so pathetic that I'm about to cry just by hearing you blabbering nonsense. I wonder why did I marry someone like you? Well, you made your own choices and you deserve what's coming to you. I've always been the way I am. You cried and said you loved me. So I married you out of pity. And you have a good income, so it wasn't that bad. But you got carried away. That's terrible. Is that why you married me? That's right. When I heard you are going to be in the hospital for a long time, I thought you'll lose your income, so I have no reason to stay together with you. And now that Bethany is here, I had no choice but to divorce you. You were thinking about such a terrible thing? It would be a waste to pay alimony to a woman like you. That's why I thought of a way to avoid paying alimony. I didn't know you were that much of a scumbag. You were able to experience the joys of marriage, even though it was only for a little while. Be thankful for that. Hey, that's rude. A lame girl like you isn't popular among guys. You should be thanking me for getting married to you. What kind of scum are you? I'll never forgive you. I'm going to be together with Bethany. I don't need you to forgive me. Okay then. As soon as Bethany started nagging me, I contacted an investigation agency and had them gather evidence. Even this communication is one of those evidences. Investigation agency? Yes, that's right. I have a picture of you and my sister walking happily, holding hands in the departure lobby of the airport. Thank you for leaving us so much evidence. I'll ask my lawyer to take care of the rest. I don't think I'll have any trouble. Look, I'll pay you the alimony. In exchange, will you plead out to both parents about what happened with Bethany? Huh? What do you mean? Both parents are furious. Even if it's good for me, I feel sorry for Bethany. She said that her parents will cut ties with her. 
That's what I heard too. Then what you have to do is to fix the story for Bethany's sake. Why? You're her sister, right? Aren't you supposed to help your sister out when she's having a hard time? Don't be silly. Who do you think is the victim here? I was seriously injured and spent a long time in the hospital while enduring pain and suffering from the rehabilitation. But you didn't even come to visit me. To top it all off, you were having an affair with my own sister. If my injuries don't heal, I'll sue you for inflicting injury. Huh? I didn't cause your injuries. You inflicted emotional distress on me when I was injured. If the injuries don't heal as a result, then you're guilty of inflicting injury, right? And of course, I'll get compensation for that. What a nasty woman. You're ripping me off. That's quite the thing to say. I'd be depressed too if you said that much. Well... I'll never forgive you and Bethany for sure. What? How could I possibly forgive you after being told that much? Luckily, I'm really glad that my in-laws are sensible people. They seem to be taking this matter very seriously. They won't even talk to me. What did they say? They say they'll pay the alimony in the lump sum and make sure you won't run away. Your parents said that they're going to make you work and pay for the money they have paid on your behalf. Oh, no. I've given my parents-in-law the contact information for the lawyer. I'm sure they're working things out with both sides. Don't underestimate me that I'm not capable of doing anything just because I'm in the hospital. Besides, I heard you're building a house right now. How do you know that? I told you. I had the investigation agency check it out. You probably started the construction because you were hoping for the insurance money. Are you stupid? There's no way that such an obvious cover-up story would work. There's no way you'll get the insurance money. That's a lie. Then where are we going to live? I'm getting divorced, so I don't care about that. Why don't you talk to Bethany instead? You were supposed to live together with her, right? There's no way I can talk to Bethany about that. She's much younger than me. I see. Seems that you are too proud to do that. I've had enough. But if you're getting a divorce, there's the division of property. Huh? Stop talking nonsense. The savings I have now are what I saved when I was single. What you saved before marriage is not included in the property division. You started saving after we were married, remember? I did save money, but you spent it all. On such things as golf, cars, business suits, and so on. You're lying. I'm not lying. It's obvious if you see the savings account in your shopping history. So what am I supposed to do? I don't know. I said I'm divorcing you, so just be prepared for that. You can handle the rest on your own. You're the one who did this to yourself. No way. Then let me tell you, building that house was also Bethany's wish. She said she'd make the down payment with me, so I stepped in. In the end, I found out that she didn't have a penny saved up. That's one of the reasons we planned this. I knew it. That girl has zero financial sense since she was a little girl. Really? She spent everything she had and borrowed money from her parents many times. I wonder if her personality will ever change. I hope she didn't borrow money elsewhere after our parents got mad at her. You're kidding, right? What are we supposed to do? I don't know. Why don't you discuss with Bethany? Don't be so cold. You're my wife and her sister, right? You could at least help us out a little. I can't believe how brazen you are. When I was in the hospital with an injury and feeling sad, you didn't even show me any kindness. On top of that, you were having an affair with my own sister. I'm not going to do anything to help both of you. Let's talk about the rest through a lawyer. Tell that to Bethany too. 
Please don't do this to me. Well then, take care. Thanks to the lawyer's help, the divorce was successfully finalized. I got both Judas and Bethany to pay me alimony for the affair. There was plenty of evidence of the affair, such as pictures and talk history, so they had no choice but to admit to the affair. However, I was just a little bit merciful that I didn't bring up the cover-up story. Bethany, who had run out of money, cried and asked our parents for help. Naturally, she was turned away at the door. It was her own fault, so she deserves that. Of course, the house that they had almost built together was also destroyed. With nowhere to live, they were forced to rent a shabby apartment near my parents-in-law's house to make ends meet. They're currently living under the supervision of my parents-in-law. Bethany could not stand such a life and decided to leave the apartment. Neither my parents nor I know what happened to them after that. I'm now living at home with my parents supporting me. After a long period of rehabilitation, I finally feel renewed as I get closer to returning back to work. It's today. I was so nervous last night that I couldn't sleep well. I'm about to arrive at the wedding hall. Where are you now? Meet you at the entrance? Hey, I'm waiting at the entrance. Are you already in the bride's room? If you haven't arrived yet, I can wait for you at the front desk. Can you reply to me? Hey, what are you doing? It's already time. You haven't checked your phone? Answer me. The staff is waiting for you. What's wrong? You don't have to tell me over and over again. It's because of you. It's time to get dressed. We're going to miss the ceremony. Why aren't you here? Did you get the time wrong? No, not like that. Then what? I'm canceling today's wedding. Huh? I mean, we're breaking the engagement. <laughs> Stop telling jokes. What are you talking about? I'm not joking. I'm serious. Today is our wedding. There's no way you can do something so selfish. Then when is it okay? Are we getting married and then get divorced? That's extra work. It's better for the guests if we cancel now so that they can avoid extra work too. Are you serious about canceling the wedding? Of course I am. How can you joke about such a thing? Relatives and guests will be here soon, you know. I don't give a shit about that. We can just ask the staff to tell them sorry. That's not the point. They're here to celebrate us. We're breaking off the engagement and you want them to celebrate us? That's too chaotic. <laughs> Why are you doing this? What? Even you were looking forward to the wedding so much. Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? There are some things it's better you don't know. <laughs> don't be silly. You suddenly break off the engagement and cancel the wedding. How can I understand immediately and leave? If you want to know so badly, then let me tell you. I met this cute girl. <laughs> what? And not just any pretty girl. Her dad is the owner of a high-end accessory company. She's the only daughter, so he wants her husband to take over the business. I'm the future president of the company. <laughs> the only daughter of a high-end accessory store? What? No, nothing. How can you break the engagement for a reason like that? What do you mean? It's the best reason, isn't it? I'm the next president of a high-end accessory company. My future is secure. Do you really love her? Of course I love her. <laughs> Everything is ideal. Marriage with such impure motives will never work out. You'll fall apart and end up in tears eventually. Don't be a sore loser just because I dumped you. Excuse me? I understand. You were supposed to be the bride today. <laughs> of course, you want to talk back at me. 
You're so annoying. Well, I'll let you talk like that. I'm feeling great to have found the best partner. <laughs> I won't be secure if I marry you. This is the best chance that could ever happen. <laughs> well, if you insist, then fine. Don't regret it. Huh? How can I regret it? I'm going to be the happiest groom in the world. <laughs> hey, this is enough. A hundred calls in the middle of the night? Give me a break. You have to listen to me. I have nothing more to say to you. I'm going to have a lawyer handle the financial details of our broken engagement and cancelled wedding. I'll let you know when it has been decided. Please, pick up the phone. How persistent. This is making me neurotic. What if I end up suffering from PTSD? I'm the one who has to suffer from it. Not my business. You knew about this, didn't you? About what? You knew her dad and that she was his daughter. Oh, about that? If you knew, why didn't you tell me? I had an idea when you told me about her, but I wasn't sure. But I guess I was right. Her dad is a friend of my dad's. He used to play with me when I was little, and he's been a big help to me. I've never met his daughter, though. What? Of course, I invited him to the wedding. You're lying. But then, the wedding was suddenly cancelled, so he called my dad to ask what has happened. And as we were explaining the details, that's how he figured out. How is that possible? I was surprised too. Who could imagine you would choose his daughter? <laughs> right. He was very upset. He said he would never accept that his daughter is about to marry the man who hurt me and betrayed me. He even said he would sue you if he had to. <laughs> sue me? You've got to be kidding. Hey, do something about it. Why would I? Why? Because... because I'm in trouble. You're not taking this seriously because you think it's somebody else's business. Well, I am somebody. Our engagement is broken. I'm a stranger to you. This is none of my business. How can you be so cold? Don't make me say it again. I have nothing to do with you. It's all your own fault, isn't it? It's... yes, but... I'm discussing with my lawyer about us, so I'll update you as soon as we've made a decision. Well then. Hey, please, answer me. Can you please stop it? I'm really starting to feel neurotic. Her dad's, I mean, the CEO of high-end accessory store's social media is going viral. Oh. Oh? What does this have to do with me? She posted a picture of me on her account, the one in front of the store, and the CEO reposted it with a message saying that his daughter was scammed. Oh, well, it's true. They made me into the bad guy. You are the bad guy, right? At least to me and him, you're the worst. A bad guy? I didn't mean to. Maybe you didn't mean to, but it turned out that way. In order to get what you wanted, you betrayed your fiancé, cancelled the wedding, and cheated on me to marry that girl. Even the world wouldn't be at peace. I just met a girl by chance who happens to be the daughter of a CEO, right? Even though you had a fiancé? Even though the wedding date was set? In fact, it was before the wedding, so you don't have to blame me so much. Don't tell me. Talk to her dad. Can I talk to you? I'll stop calling. 
Just give me a reply. I'm in a lot of trouble, please. Just listen to me. God, if you don't stop this, I'll turn you into the police for disorderly conduct, okay? Don't say that. Please, just listen to me. She just asked me for compensation. I haven't done anything wrong to her. And why is she asking for it? Her dad told her everything? What? She didn't know anything, right? That you had a fiancé or you canceled the wedding? That's why she posted that picture on social media, right? Yeah. Maybe her dad told her the truth by reposting that picture. Huh? Well, it's your fault. <laughs> what the hell did I do? Even though you had a fiancé, you approached her and asked her to marry you. And, you know, when you find out that the reason was to be the president, most women would be hurt. I believe she felt the same way. And many people agreed to it on X. But we weren't officially engaged yet. And of course, I hadn't even met her dad, so how could I be sued? You left the evidence that you were engaged. It can't be helped. Evidence? You secretly stole my engagement ring from my drawer, didn't you? Did I? I work in a restaurant, so I'm not allowed to wear a ring on a daily basis. That's why I kept it in a drawer. And it was gone. You took it, didn't you? That's... I was desperate to keep her from leaving me, so... You're an idiot! <laughs> if there's any physical evidence, you can file a lawsuit for compensation with the court. Huh? Is that true? Besides, let me send you a picture. Marry me. I'll make you happy no matter what, and let's help your father together. That's what it says. This. These are the texts I sent her. Why do you have it? Her dad took a screenshot and sent it to me. He said, this is also a proof that this daughter was scammed. <laughs> oh no. When she found out the truth, she was so shocked that she got sick. You're lying. She got sick? Oh, you didn't know? I mean, you can't reach her in this situation, can you? Plus, it seems like I'm blocked, so... I can't get any information about her. Of course you are. So hey, can you negotiate with her and her dad? Tell them I really want to marry her. No, why would I do that? My engagement was broken and the wedding was cancelled by you. I'm deeply hurt. Then who am I supposed to ask? I don't know. Please, I want to have a secure future as a CEO. That's why I cancelled our marriage. If this won't happen, then everything is going to be in vain. Wow. Look at that self-centeredness. Her feelings, her dad's feelings, my feelings. You don't think about anything. You just want to be president, don't you? That's right. I've always dreamed of sitting in the president's chair at the president's office. I guess dreams do come true if you wish hard enough. To be honest, I had given up. I never thought my luck would turn around at a time like this. I don't want to waste this chance that has come my way. So you have to convince her and the president. Don't ask me. You deserve to be sued. I have nothing to do with this, so don't reach me anymore. Hey, what's this all about? Say something, you money thief. What do you mean, money thief? That's so rude. God, will you stop calling me? Hey, it's too expensive to charge me for breaking off the engagement. What do you mean, $50,000? Are you trying to extort money from me? It's not that much. Did you look through the documents? I did. It does say $50,000. You only saw the amount, right? Did you look at the breakdown? Huh? I knew it. 
That fee is not just for breaking off the engagement, but also includes the wedding expenses, the honeymoon cancellation fee, and the fee for the new house. We decided to go extravagant and put a lot of options on the wedding since it's a once-in-a-lifetime, remember? Oh. You chose four dresses for me too. I did choose some cocktail dresses. You decided to take a cruise for our honeymoon so that it will be the most memorable one ever. It went way over our budget. And on top of that, you wanted to live closer to your office and you signed a contract for a rental luxury apartment. I remember the rent was also very expensive. See? All of these things were cancelled on the day. I'm sure you can get a rough estimate, but it's not less than that amount, right? But we didn't even have a wedding, and we didn't even get married. How can it be such a large amount if we cancelled in advance? You don't know? It's written in the terms and conditions. 100% will be charged as a cancellation fee if you cancel on the day of the wedding. 50% for the travel. Why do I have to pay the full amount? Isn't it normal to split it with you? What are you talking about? It was your unilateral decision to cancel in the first place. I have nothing to do with it. You're the one who deserves to pay. Are you kidding me? There's no way I can pay that amount of money. This is your parents' offer too. Your parents were so heartbroken that day. They couldn't tell how sorry they were that their stupid son cost this. They didn't know how to apologize to me. My mom and dad? Of course. They were at the wedding not knowing anything. What? You're too easygoing. They want you to pay what you can afford and... They'll pay the rest for now. And they said they'd make you pay them back for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh no. How hard do I have to work? If that girl files a lawsuit for compensation, you'll have to pay even more. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No way. I'd be in debt trap instead of CEO. That's a nice future. <laughs> That's not good. You think this is somebody else's problem. Because it is somebody else's problem. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You did all this on your own, remember? Do you finally understand what you've done? I didn't mean it like this. I just wanted to be a president. I don't want that to become a life of paying off debts. I don't care what you say. You've done this. I'm sure her dad won't just let you get away with it if his daughter got sick and hurt because of you. <laughs> I suggest you deal with them with sincerity from now on. <laughs> I can't. I'll never be able to pay them all. What am I supposed to do? You don't have to decide it right now. Why don't you take your time and think about it alone? It's none of my business. You. How can you say such a cold thing when I'm depressed? You've done much worse to me. Do you know how I felt at the wedding hall being alone when you cancelled everything? That. I'm sorry. Even though you say you're sorry now, it won't change anything. Please, forgive me. At least try to convince her and the president not to file a lawsuit for compensation, please. I don't see any sign of apology in you. I don't care as long as you pay me what I'm asking for. That's... You're too cold. I have nothing more to say to you. I will block you after this conversation. We will never meet again. Well then, goodbye. I was finally able to escape from that crazy phone calls. He paid me the fee as he promised, and it was all over. After that, his parents scolded him a lot and even disowned him, telling him never to come back to their house. I am sorry for his parents, but he got what he deserved. On top of that, the president, who could not forgive him, filed a lawsuit against him for compensation. He had to pay it too because there was a lot of evidence left behind. 
If it were true, he would have been charged with theft of the engagement ring, but I let that go. I heard from his parents that he is now working from morning till night at a big factory with a dormitory in the countryside in order to clear the debts. I sincerely hope that he will be able to pay off his debts while his parents are still in good health. I would like to make a fresh start and devote my days to work again. Grace, are you home today? Hello, Olivia. Yes, I was just about to cook dinner. Oh, then great! What is it? I'm thinking of going over there today! What? You have a plan with my husband? I'm not allowed to go if I don't have a plan? No, I... No, it's not that. I didn't make any plans, but I just wanted to see my brother. Huh? I've been taking care of him ever since he was little. He's a fine adult now, but he used to be so shy. I had to give him a lot of help. Well, that's one of the cutest things about him, though. Oh, and? And? Of course I'm going to enjoy chatting with him. What's wrong with a sister going to see her brother? No, nothing's wrong. Right? And, by the way, I want you to cook my dinner too. Huh? You're gonna have dinner too? What's with that tone? You think it's too much trouble? No, I wouldn't think that. It's already evening, so of course I'm going to eat. I mean, isn't it a wife's duty to ask if I would like to eat together? I guess so. You really are so inconsiderate. My brother will have a hard time with a wife like you. Anyway, I'm heading over there now. Make sure my dinner is ready. Okay. Of course, there will be dessert after dinner, right? I must have dessert. No, there's no dessert. I don't think I'll have time to go shopping. I'll focus on cooking delicious food instead of it. Huh? Are you trying to go against me? What's with the delicious food? You're a terrible cook. You don't have to say such horrible things. Then, do as you're told, understood? Yes, ma'am. Are you almost done? It's gonna take a little longer. Why? I just got a call from your sister, saying she's coming over. Olivia? Oh, that's great. It's been a while. I'm looking forward to it. It's been a while? We just met her at your parents' house a week ago. How much do you love her? What? You're jealous of her? What a jerk. It's not like that, and she told me to cook dinner for her. She's gonna eat dinner too? Awesome. Treat her as much as you can, okay? She's coming all the way to our house. I was told to prepare dessert after dinner. Oh right, she loves sweets. If that's what she wants, then do so. Hey, can you go buy some on your way home from work? What? Why me? I have to start cooking dinner now. I don't have time to go buy sweets. Isn't it because you're not efficient? You stay at home and live comfortably on my income, so you should at least do something about it. Living comfortably? It's not like I'm not chilling at home, I'm working. Your income doesn't even reach the amount of allowance, and you're being so arrogant only by having that job. Anyway, my sister said she'd come over, so do something about it. Wait, I didn't ask her to come. Huh? If you say something terrible to her, I won't forgive you. Okay, okay, I understand. I'm wasting my time. I'll do something for your sister's sake. If you understand, don't ask me from the beginning. Grace, can I talk to you now? Good morning, Olivia. Thanks for dinner yesterday. You're welcome. But I would prefer to have a better food. What? You didn't like it? It's not like... It's just that the food was kind of cheap, you know? Even though I'm your sister-in-law, I'm still a guest. I wish you would have used at least one of the high-grade foods. High-grade food? My husband's income is not enough to buy such a luxury food. Wow, surprising! You blame my brother for your bad cooking? I didn't say that. You're saying that his income isn't good enough to buy luxury foods, right? Well, that's true. I'm trying to cook with what we have. I feel sorry for him, blaming your poor cooking on his income. I told you that's not what I mean. Fine, Olivia, if you don't have anything from me, I need to go. It's not like I have much time now. You're just being lazy at home. How cocky. Did I leave any papers there yesterday? Oh, the brown envelope? Yes, I knew I left it. That document, it's for a meeting. 
It must be very important. I will keep it here. I need it for the meeting this afternoon. So can you bring it to the office right away? What? Now? Of course! I told you I'd use it this afternoon! You really are clumsy! Do you even understand what people are saying? I have a remote meeting today. I'm afraid I don't have time to bring it to your office. Huh? I don't care about your remote meeting! You should come right now! Hey, you know I'm working too. Work? Don't make me laugh! You're just being lazy at home! It's less than a part-time job anyway, right? That's not true. I don't care what you do, so just bring me the document. Don't tell me all of a sudden. You are my housekeeper, so all you have to do is follow my orders. I'm your housekeeper? That's right. Housekeepers are supposed to shut up and do as their employers say, right? I need you to bring the document to my office as soon as possible. If I don't get it in time, you take the responsibility. Got it? Can I talk to you for a second? What is it from the morning? I'm kind of busy getting ready for today. I'm even more busy. I got another text from your sister. What does she say? She wants me to bring her the meeting material she left at her house to the office right now. Oh, that? Why don't you just go bring it for her right now? If she's in trouble, then help her. You're not busy anyway, right? I'm working too, remember? I have a remote meeting in the morning. Can you talk to her about it? Huh? Comparing a job that doesn't even make any money and my sister's meeting? Which is more important? Of course, it's her meeting. What is that? I'm serious about my job too, you know? I can't do anything that would make my clients in trouble. Don't make me laugh. What's with the clients? Who are they? Your toy or something? A toy? I don't care about that. Shut up and bring her the document. What's wrong with you siblings? What? Your sister treated me like a housekeeper. She said a housekeeper should only do what she orders. That's not an option, is it? No option? You don't make enough money. You can't do the housework. You're an incompetent wife. You deserve to be called a housekeeper. I mean, you're no better than a housekeeper. How terrible. You never stand up for me, who is your wife. At least fulfill the duty as a housekeeper. Hey, aren't you my husband? Can't you be more considerate to your wife? It's not my fault. Are you misunderstanding something? It's obviously your fault. What? The food tastes bad. You try to make me go shopping on my way home from work. You don't listen to my sister's requests. You complain all the time. What part of this is not your fault? Don't be silly. You thought like that all this time? That's terrible. Of course. If you don't bring her the documents by the time, I'll reduce the amount of money I use for the household budget as punishment. Do you understand? Fine. Olivia, what on earth is going on? Oh, Grace, what is it without even saying hello? You're always rude. I heard that you told my husband to reduce the amount of money for living expenses he gives to me. What on earth are you up to? We can't live on this for a month. Oh, you don't understand. I thought you need to be penalized. Penalized? Why do I have to? Because, even though you're my housekeeper, you don't listen to me. And to top it all off, you complain a lot. Is that the reason? It's natural to complain, because you are so unreasonable. Plus, I am not your housekeeper. Are you still saying that? You always surprise me. How can you talk so cheekily when you're so incompetent? You'll never make my brother happy. That's why I gave you a penalty. That's too much. How can we live on such a small amount of money? What do you mean, a small amount of money? How can you call the money my brother worked so hard to earn a small amount? That kind of person has to be punished. He agreed with me. What? He agreed? Of course, he wouldn't oppose me. Because you're an incompetent wife. Why did he marry someone like you? I feel sorry for him. You're going that far. You don't want us to live happily. No one said that. I want my brother to be happier than anyone else. That's why you need to be punished. Do you know how the sister feel when she is so thoughtful to her brother? I don't understand such things. I don't think we would understand each other no matter what, if you'll excuse me. Hey, how cocky are you? Hey, where are you? Oh, I'm at my sister's house. Why? You talked to her today, right? She's right. You're not fulfilling your duties as a wife at all. 
and your attitude towards her is cheeky. Therefore, I'm penalizing you. You guys are really crazy. What in the world have I done? First of all, we don't even have kids, and yet you don't work. You're spending your time being lazy at home, relying on my income. I work from home. How many times do I have to tell you? It's not even enough. You can't afford high-grade food, right? I don't think you have enough income. High-grade foods can't be afforded that often, you know? I'm trying my best to manage with the living expenses you give me. I've taken good care of those money. But if you lower that amount any further, it's going to be tough. It's your fault. Huh? It's because you're too incompetent. You should be punished once and reconsider your behavior. If you don't like it, then we are divorcing. Enough. I understand. I'll divorce you right now. What? Are you sure? How are you going to live without any money? I can see you being miserable every day. It's none of your business. You left the divorce documents on the table because you wanted to, right? I'm going to turn in the paper. Is that okay? Of course it's fine. I'm happy when my incompetent wife is gone. Fine. Grace, how are you? It's me. Can I talk to you now? Don't text me over friendly. You're a stranger now. Don't be so cold. We used to be a couple. Stop it. I want to forget it. I want to get back together with you. I want to take back the divorce. No, I don't want to. Can you stop texting me? Actually, after you left, I lost my electricity and water and all the utilities. I bet. And finally, the apartment manager told me to leave. I'm sure he would. The manager didn't do anything wrong. You were behind on your rent, weren't you? And the electricity and water stopped because you didn't pay, huh? How do you know? I have no idea what's going on. Of course you don't. You've never managed the household finances. You've only complained about it, though. What do you mean? You only gave me $300 for living expenses and didn't pay anything else, right? I don't understand your nerve to think you can live like that. $300 is enough for a couple to live, right? Well, I might be able to manage just for food. But to live day by day, food expense is not enough. There are so many other things to pay for. That much? Of course. Our apartment was under my name since I was living there before I got married, so it was deducted from my account, but when we got divorced, I changed that account so that it would be deducted from yours. Why would you do that without permission? Isn't it obvious? We're divorced. Why would I pay? If you pay the rent, food, utilities, miscellaneous expenses, and insurance, I'm sure your small income won't cover all of it. I'm sure it couldn't be deducted. Then how have we been living? Are you an idiot? Huh? Of course, it's because I was paying. How the hell did you pay for it? There's no way you can pay if you're being lazy at home and not even going to work. Perhaps. Did you have a man pay for it? Don't be silly. I told you I was working. When you were sneaking around on your computer? I am working as a web designer, having business transactions with the clients. That's how I work. There was this teacher from the design firm I worked at before I got married, and she told me that I should continue to work from home because there are some clients who like my works. Is that so? I had a small number of clients at first, but one after another, clients introduced me to each other, and now I make money three times what you make. That's how we were able to make a living. You're kidding, right? Of course I was trying to save money and spend as little as possible. It wasn't easy with such a small living expenses. Then you and your sister treated me like a housekeeper without even listening to me. I'm sorry about that. I didn't know you made that much money. That's not the point. You siblings have a rapt way of thinking. No matter how much money she doesn't make, would you treat your wife or sister-in-law as a housekeeper? That's because she told me to do so. It's not my will. So we can start over as a husband and wife, right? Stop it, you sissy boy. Sissy boy, that's too much. I'm just being honest. Now I believe you too. Hey, let's start over again. You've got to be kidding me. I never want to see your face again. Why would you say that? You never know when you would betray me. Sissy boys should be taken care of by your lovely sister, not me. Don't say that and help me out. I'm about to be kicked out from the apartment, you know. You can't pay the rent, right? Then it's natural to be kicked out. Why don't you rent your own apartment or move into your sister's house? It's none of my business anymore, so do as you like. Please, Grace, you're the only one I have. Olivia has a boyfriend now, and lately she hasn't been talking to me at all, 
I can't move in with her. Then find your own place to live. You're not a child. You can at least do that. Don't reach me anymore. You're going to abandon me? Don't you feel sorry for me? Not at all. I've been blamed so much until now, so it's rather refreshing. So don't contact me again. If you ever get close to me, I'll call the police. Remember that. Grace, you're lying, right? We've loved each other, remember? I can't talk to you. I'll block you right away. Well then, take care. The psychophantic man who was obeying his sister had no idea about our family budget. Except for the $300 he gave me for the living expenses, he spent almost all of his money on his sister. When I found out about it, I was stunned from the bottom of my heart. After Olivia got a boyfriend, Effie seemed to be spending all his money for himself without knowing why and as a result, he had to adjust the debts. I was so stunned that I couldn't even say a word. I am so glad that I divorced such a man. After the divorce, I came back to the design firm where I used to work, instead of working from home. Working at the office is more exciting and I can get along with many people. Also, I can learn from teachers, so everything is good for me. Of course, I have enough income to live on my own, so I would like to enjoy single life in this style for a while. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.